Large animals like elephants and blue whales also have a lot more cells than humans do. If every single cell has an equal chance of developing cancer, then why do all these blue whales and elephants not have cancer yet? Hi everyone, I'm Reza and you're watching Scientastica. If you're new to this channel, I'm a scientist by profession, and in this channel I talk about intriguing and paradoxical scientific topics. If you like my videos, please make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to stay notified as soon as I post a video. Without further ado, let's jump into today's topic. When some living cells in your body start growing aggressively, they form a mass of cells called tumors. Tumors can stay benign and harmless, or they can become malignant and start invading other tissues and organs of the body and become cancerous. Cancer usually forms due to some kind of mutations in the gene. These mutations can happen just randomly when the cells are dividing, or they can happen from exposure to environmental conditions like radiation or harmful chemical substances called carcinogens. In 1977, British epidemiologist Richard Pito was studying tumor formation in mice in response to their exposure to carcinogens. He noted that mice that had extended exposure to carcinogenic substances had aggressive cancer formation. This makes sense. As we grow older, our cells divide more number of times and as a result have a higher chance of picking up a mutation and becoming cancerous. If every single cell has an equal chance of picking up a mutation and becoming cancerous, then large, long-living animals that have a lot more cells than humans should already have cancer by now. But this is not true. And this seemingly puzzling scenario was termed as Pito's paradox. There's one theory that suggests that in the case of large animals like blue whales, Peter's paradox might not be a paradox at all. These blue whales do get cancer, but they also get what are called hypertumors. When cancer cells start growing aggressively, it sends out signal in the form of released proteins called TAF, which is its way of telling the body to produce more blood vessels. Sometimes some aggressive cancer cells start growing so fast, the body cannot keep up with them and make as much blood vessels as they need. These aggressive hypertumors then start feeding on the normal tumor cells. These normal tumor cells are now malnourished and therefore they cannot grow to a larger size. Scientists use differential equation based mathematical models to predict hypertumors. I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested in learning more about hypertumors. Let's look at other animals that have managed to stave off cancer and live longer. Take this elephant, for example. In 2015, a team of scientists started scouring the elephant genome to search for an answer to the pedos paradox. They found that elephants contain extra copies of a particular gene called tumor suppressor gene, TP53. They're called so because they protect against tumors by sensing DNA damage in a cell and triggering cell death, thereby killing the potentially precancerous cells. Other animals like the naked mole rat of East Africa manage to stave off cancer by not allowing the cells to come close together at all. Hyaluronin triggers a cell death response whenever cells come close to each other. This process is called contact and a lot of these animals that rarely get cancer are not very well studied, but there are good researches that are currently undergoing. Joshua Schiffman and his team are currently exploring the possibility of attacking tumor cells by delivering TP53 genes via nanoparticles. Projects like this may open up newer ways to approach and protect ourselves against cancer. Until then, we research more and we learn. Thank you guys so much for sticking around till the end. If you like my videos and learned anything, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Until next time, 
and welcome and this was science.